next speaker, please welcome Mr. Rolof Koopman, Senior Director, Strategic Alliances Solution Partners, Laura IoT from Semtech with his presentation, Laura One, what's new on long range wireless and geolocation with IoT? Thank you. I think you have to allow me to share my screen. Is that correct? Yes, correct. But before that, I would like to ask you okay. the uh, question. Would you be all right? Absolutely. Perfect. So LoRaWAN was launched in 2008 in San Diego, California, and currently the technology is booming. And um, basically, keyword, wireless technology of the future. In addition to LoRaWAN, there are other radio networks uh, for long ranges. What features does LoRaWAN have to offer in order to become a standard? Interesting question, and I'm definitely going to cover that in my presentation. Uh, LoRaWAN is becoming more or less de facto standard for wireless IoT uh, applications, particularly for massive IoT, uh, compared to the predecessor, the speakers that were speaking about 5G. 5G will serve entirely different applications, bandwidth, hungry, low latency applications, definitely need 5G. Uh, but I'll show you my presentation why LoRaWAN is... Uh, the technology of choice for many IoT applications. Great. Then, without further ado, I give a um, yeah. The stage is yours. As soon as you share your screen with your presentation. Okay. Yes, we see your screen. That's good to hear. <laughs> now. <laughs> yes. Perfect. That's now it. you're good to go. The stage is okay. yours. All right. Thank you very much. So it's my pleasure to speak on this uh, seminar. Um, and I hope most of you have already heard about Laura Wan. I will touch upon a couple of new developments that are very interesting and relevant for those who are building IoT applications. I'm working with Semtech, uh, who is manufacturing the uh, Laura Laura Wan chipsets that are mostly inside these uh, IoT applications and I'm responsible for strategic alliances uh, within Semtech. So I think to your question just before, where does LoRa fit in and where is LoRa becoming a standard? It is actually in, in long range communications that don't need much bandwidth. Um, and yet, uh, even when they communicate in a long range, consume very low power. This is where LoRa has been designed for. So you can see here, it's filling a gap that's currently not covered by any of the wireless technologies that we all know. I mean, uh, many of the people on this call probably know RFID, NFC, uh, and of course, Wi-Fi and BLE and the cellular technologies like uh, 4G, 5G. Um, but like 4G, 5G, the, the power consumption is uh, way higher than for LoRaWAN. So for many applications, that run on batteries, uh, that's not an, uh, a viable application. It's a non-licensed spectrum, it's the ISM band, so you can actually build your own networks, and I'll talk about that later. Um, and it's the, for indoor applications, it's a very robust radio technology that actually can communicate across different floors and multiple buildings. So if you do that comparison, um, I like to focus primarily, I think, on the, the cellular versus LP1, which are both long range technologies. Uh, MBIoT is, uh, is one of the competitive uh, standards to LoRaWAN. Um, as I said before, the battery lifetime of an MBIoT sensor is um, gonna be way shorter than a LoRaWAN. We have evidence from partners and customers that did this uh, uh, comparison, and they see that the MBIT sensors can consume 10 times more power than a LoRaWAN sensor. The other reason why people select LoRaWAN is that there's a huge variety of sensors that are run on LoRaWAN. Uh, MBIT is catching up, of course, but uh, if you want to pick a sensor for a particular application, you are definitely going to find that on a LoRaWAN uh, standard. So that's, uh, that's a very good advantage for many uh, IoT applications. And there's other features here that I'll talk about that later as well. Uh, one of the thing here is building your own private network. Because basically, the unlicensed band allows customers to do that. Um, not every country has public networks. Uh, and I'll show you later, there's many countries that aren't getting these uh, nationwide covering public networks. 
Uh, if you don't have that, you would want to build your own private network, which is allowed and possible and is very cost effective because think about putting up a LoRaWAN gateway, cost you maybe between thousand to two thousand uh, dollars, uh, covering an entire compound um, is a very attractive option, right? And that's like the capex only option. So you basically have one investment and you have your own uh, private IoT network. Whereas you can also use a public network where you pay uh, subscription fees for the sensors that are connected to these public networks. Um, but it gives you on the lifetime of the sensor, of course, a um, subscription cost that might uh, make the IT application less attractive. So the, the choice that companies have is use a public network if available or else build a private network or actually combine both, right? So you have a private network and you use public networks where they are available for like transport outside your own uh, premises. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Law Alliance. Uh, it's been founded uh, a bit more than five years ago and we have almost 500 members uh, nowadays that uh, contribute to further evolving the standard. The Laura WAN standard is a global standard and it's supported by uh, many industries and many players. Uh, you see here a number of the, 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 the players uh, on the screen. Uh, there's big companies like uh, Amazon, AWS, Cisco, uh, Orange, and you name them. They're all in the part of the alliance and working on further evolving. Uh, the standards, and I'll talk about a new uh, release of a standard just lately that allows satellite communications, um, but also we do a lot of marketing in communicating best practices to target audiences in different uh, IoT uh, market segments and verticals. So we do a lot of uh, these kind of uh, promotion and webinars, etc. So it's a very attractive alliance and it's growing very rapidly now. This is the map of the world uh, from a LoRa perspective. You can see here the yellow countries that have LoRaWAN network operators. Um, and the green ones are also LoRaWAN network operated countries, but they uh, have even roaming on top. So the green ones, you can just roam uh, with, uh, with mobile sensors uh, without having any connectivity issues. And uh, this number is growing uh, as we speak right now. I think it's 27 or even more. And uh, there's uh, technical roaming uh, is deployed and also commercial agreements are in place. So that's uh, something that is very promising to allow global coverage uh, uh, for LoRaWAN connected devices. And of course, the most recent development is LoRa over satellite. Um, the space is the limit here because basically then those uh, terrestrial networks uh, won't have the boundaries of the different ISM bands, which are different per, per region, like Europe, US, et cetera. Um, so this is uh, very promising. And there's quite a, a dozen of companies, and I'll show you later um, who they are, that have developed these uh, lower over satellite capability. And it's very, again, low cost and, and low battery consuming uh, sensors that can connect with devices and sending just very small packets of data that can reach these, uh, these LEO satellites, these CubeSats, like a shoebox uh, that, that big uh, in low, lower Earth orbits, but also geosatellites, right? So that's uh, a promising development. Uh, some use uh, the, the LoRa gateway to communicate to these LoRa space uh, segments, uh, or they use uh, actually uh, modules inside the sensor that communicate directly with the satellite. Uh, both options are available. Um, yeah, these, these satellite uh, providers are building more and more satellites, cover more and more areas of the world, uh, and they're launching as we speak, right? So this is a big thing because it just gives so much more uh, capabilities for network connectivity, for all kinds of use cases that are particularly remote, and hard to reach areas like uh, oceans and deserts. It also gives you global mobility for transport assets that travel through ships or, or trucks or trains. Um, and there's many other applications like animal tracking, uh, maintenance of uh, all kind of infrastructure, be the electricity masks, uh, you name it, and crop irrigation for, for smart farming, mining, oil and gas. It is opening up a complete new spectrum of, of, of applications. And what, what is allowing this is one of the latest newest standards that the LoRa Alliance has published. It's the LoRaWAN. LRFHSS, which stands for Frequency Hopping Spread Spectrum. 
And this standard is basically an extension of the current standard. Uh, it's like an additional region, if you like, in the LoRaWAN standards, and it's just increasing the network capacity just to have millions of uh, devices running on a very same network footprint. And actually, it has a very uh, resistance against interference uh, and a high spectral efficiency to achieve this uh, increase of network capacity. So that allows basically these sensors uh, to communicate directly with a gateway that's on board of a satellite that's uh, operating the ISM band or can also be a software-defined radio. And the benefits are definitely for outdoor use cases, but also to create a roaming between satellite and terrestrial networks. So it's like a seamless communication between a sensor traveling uh, on and off a, a, a terrestrial network and then they get as a backup the satellite connectivity. Again, these sensors, lower land based have a very uh, excellent uh, ratio for cost and, and battery performance, um, which is of course by design the lower WAN standard. Now, there's a couple of companies that have solved this lower over satellite. Um, as I said before, it's either device or it's the backhaul from the gateway to the satellite, and that could be either in low, er low Earth orbit or a geosatellite. So you see a couple of names here that have announced already that they go uh, provide these services uh, during the course of this year. Some of them are already commercially operational and have a service available. What you see here like companies like Imarsat, uh, Eurosat, which are the big ones we most know, but also startups like Fleet, uh, Kinese, uh, Hyber, uh, SpaceX. Actually, SpaceX acquired Swarm, which was a startup that also had uh, LoRa satellites, EchoStar. So there's many companies that jumped on the bandwagon here to provide uh, LoRa over satellites because they see that LoRaWAN is the de facto standard for IoT applications. And then if you look at the kind of applications that you can serve for satellite connectivity, you have, of course, the cluster devices, uh, co-located devices on one site. We have like a whole campus that has uh, a LoRaWAN network, a uh, private network that then the, the, the gateway on site would communicate with the satellite. So think about smart villages, uh, remote in the desert, uh, military operations, worker safety and oil and gas yards, et cetera, et cetera, maritime. Uh, you usually have a gateway that communicates uh, with the devices on Earth and then uh, the backside, uh, the backhaul to the satellite. But also a device can communicate directly. You have the, the fixed devices uh, on, on certain sites, but also on the sea like buoys and fishing, energy utilities, um, and you have mobile traveling transit devices uh, for all kinds of use cases that uh, can communicate themselves directly with the satellite. Now, I also like to highlight a couple of the latest uh, customer deployments. Uh, this is not satellite. This is uh, the normal LoRaWAN uh, terrestrial networks. And I just picked two verticals because I thought the audience on this call is, uh, is primarily working in, in logistics and retail. So uh, in those two verticals, uh, I thought I'll show you a couple of uh, recent developments. One is uh, Renault. French car manufacturer, they, uh, they have a challenge that I think most of us are quite aware of, uh, particularly in the RFID industry, that these uh, transport assets, these carriers actually, they get lost. Um, and if, if you lose like every year 5% and you ask $100, you can calculate that this on a, on a on an, in, uh, number of assets, like 100,000s, is going to cost you a serious money. So they found a solution with Laura Wen built uh, private LoRaWAN networks in the, the 30 sites where there's manufacturing, there is uh, assembly lines, which is around 30 in Europe, that all have a private LoRaWAN network so they can detect these, uh, these devices, oh, sorry, these uh, transport assets uh, anywhere where they are, right? So that gives them full supply chain visibility uh, and can then manage the assets more uh, adequately to make sure that they're not piling up at one location um, and also there's no shrinkage, right? Uh, that uh, assets are being removed from uh, from the supply chain. Another one is Volvo trucks that uh, use the solution provided by Abbeyway, which is a company that has uh, LoRaWAN-based trackers with GPS uh, on board. Uh, so these trucks are standing outside, and then uh, for searching one particular vehicle that's going to be customized, they find these uh, vehicles much faster. Also indoor, they monitor the flow of these uh, trucks in the assembly line. 
And they're now rolling this out to four more sites uh, in the US and Europe. Then another one is retail. And I'd like to highlight here uh, food retail, which um, there's a couple of uh, use cases, very interesting, which one is uh, produced by a company called Axino here in Switzerland, where I live. And also Migro, the largest food retailer, is now rolling out the Axino solution and deployed already in about 100 stores here in Switzerland. Uh, what it does, it actually is not just the temperature monitoring in the fridge. It's doing, it's doing AI algorithms to predict when these single food items will go out of range. There's this HACCP compliance that every food retailer has to comply with. Um, so if you... Um, know very well when a food item will go out of range, you can mark it down and sell it on the very same day, or you have to actually re, um, have to, um, to remove the items and it will become food waste. So this is a very interesting solution for companies to reduce food waste and save energy. So the algorithm basically uh, is uh, running in the cloud and the sensor is, uh, is measuring the temperature in the fridges and then uh, it gives the uh, the, the, this case, Migro, the information about uh, how they monitor the, um, the, the fridges. Another application here with cold chain is a company called NanoThings. You see here this label. It's, uh, it's almost like an RFID label. It's carrying with the food items between different sites. It could be between a distribution center and the retailer. Um, and it's actually uh, able to run on a battery for two years and can transmit uh, over distance of 10 miles. So very interesting for cold chain. Another cold chain related solution is uh, Compliance Mate, a US-based company that's been deployed in several uh, quick service restaurants uh, like uh, the Five Guys Burgers, uh, Fry Stacker Jones and the Hard Rock Cafe. They're using this solution in fridges uh, and coolers in their restaurants. And then in non-food, there's a couple of applications that I'd like to highlight that were communicated recently is uh, a company called InView. Uh, may, maybe some of you know them because of their, they're very active in this wireless space. Um, they have a solution, it's called uh, the One Key, which has a LoRaWAN radio inside. And it's uh, every worker carries a key that they have to use to open these uh, shelves and racks to show articles or items to their customers, and it will actually detect whether it was being put back or not, um, and then they can track this across the store. So by that, they can reduce internal theft, which is actually, uh, in many cases of these high value items, it's like 50% of all theft, so it's, it's not insignificant. Then we have uh, a solution provided by KST, which is uh, an e-ink solution, uh, a smart pricing label that can be programmed uh, centrally. It's uh, probably well known to most of you, which uh, is uh, there's also other wireless options to this, but this is a lower WAN option and it's, it's very, uh, a very attractive solution because it, only ha it, it can last like two years on, uh, on a one battery. And then the solution to the right is one for uh, ordering for, um, in this case, Swiss Post is using a solution provided by Miramico that can uh, use by uh, consumers to scan a code. The code is actually uh, can be printed on a, a normal printer at home. So uh, customers of Swiss Post can order uh, on-demand postal services like registered mail or a uh, parcel delivery by just clicking on a LoRaWAN button that then automatically will start the, the workflow from Swiss Post to deliver that. And this can be used in any B2C applications, be that pizza career or printer cartridges, uh, refill, but also in B2B environments for assembly lines. So I think what I showed you is also um, relevant to, to keep in mind that you build these private IoT infrastructures um, to use for multi, multiple use cases, right? This is multi-tenancy for IoT. So here's here an example for uh, smart metering uh, utilities, and that could be water utilities or electricity utilities, or gas, and they can just build one infrastructure, right? You have one city, you cover your LoRaWAN network, and with that, you can provide multiple applications uh, for multiple uses. Another example is for smart buildings, where you can have like occupancy sensors uh, deployed uh, as a first use case, and later on, you're going to roll out temperature sensors 
humidity sensors in different rooms or door window close, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the beauty of the uh, of LoRaWAN infrastructure. You put those base stations or what we call LoRaWAN gateways where you need them. They communicate with a network server and then over IP actually uh, get access to the application server, which in most cases is a cloud application. Now, a, a recent development that I thought I'll, I'll I'll share with you is the latest, uh, the third generation LoRa Semtech chip. Uh, it's called uh, LR1110. Uh, we call that LoRa Edge and LoRa Cloud, and I'll show you what the special features are of this new chipset. So the LR1110 has three radios on board. It has a LoRa radio, of course, but also a Wi-Fi passive scanner and a multi-constellation GNSS satellite scanner, right? So the chip detects that data, it will transmit that through the LoRa Center Cloud, which does the computation of the uh, captured data and gives back to the application a geolocation, an outdoor geolocation or an indoor geolocation based on Wi-Fi scanning. So this is a very attractive uh, solution for indoor-outdoor uh, hybrid solutions because many technologies can only do either outdoor, like GPS, or indoor, like uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So with the LoRaWAN uh, LR1110 chipset in combination with LoRa Clouds, you can have hybrid geolocation that giving, gives you a new sort of capability for building new applications that was never possible before. And again, LoRaWAN is all about low power consumption. So this has been by design um, created in a way that's only consuming like 10% of the normal GPS modules. So 10 times longer lifetime on a battery. That's a, that's a huge advantage. The other advantage here is you can provision those sensors at scale. 10,000 of sensors provide them uh, from over the air from the clouds where the keys are provisioned from a cloud application running on the Semtech cloud, which is uh, way more secure than handing over keys between manufacturers, solution providers, system integrators, and customers. And then some last uh, words about what Semtech as a company is about. We are a global company, NASDAQ quoted. We're about 1,400 employees. We have 30 locations worldwide. Uh, the center of gravity for LoRa is in Europe, where we have the R&D development in uh, Neuchâtel here in Switzerland, but also in Grenoble in France. Um, we have, uh, we have operations in 30 countries around the world. Uh, Semtech is not just LoRa. We have other, other divisions uh, that actually uh, make up uh, the total business. My role is basically uh, not selling chipsets. We work, uh, my team works with solution providers and systems integrators. And if any of you on the call, please reach out to me because we're, we're here to help you in building IoT solutions based on LoRa, LoRaWAN and make sure that you have sort of best practice uh, support from, uh, from Semtech who pretty much deals with all the module manufacturers, device manufacturers, gateway manufacturers, cloud platform providers, right? We know pretty much this entire ecosystem and can help you to accelerate your time to market. With that, I'd like to close and I hope there's still some time for questions. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation. It's uh, interesting to hear that as the, it's really cool actually, as we speak that satellites are being launched and that the LoRa network is covering even oceans and deserts as you mentioned in your presentation. So should Absolutely. we should we see what questions there are? Yes, definitely. Let's see the questions. So the first question what is the difference between UWB and LoRa in indoor asset locations? Yeah, ultra wideband is a, a, a technology that operates on a very high spectrum. Uh, LoRaWAN is in the ISM band sub uh, one gigahertz, whereas UWB is uh, beyond the, the two and a half gigahertz. So it gives you a higher location accuracy. Uh, actually, there's many of our customers that combine UWB for geolocate, oh, sorry, for a, indoor location and combine that with LoRaWAN to communicate that data across, for example, an indoor site. If you have distribution centers or warehouses, uh, those UWE sensors can communicate over LoRaWAN connections. So um, it's complementary, I would say. 
because LoRa would not be able to locate at like uh, 10 centimeters accuracy, which UWB is claiming. Um, so it's very complementary, I would say. Okay, so let's see if we have a second question. Yes, what advantage does LoRaWAN have compared to Zigfox or NB IoT? Okay, yeah, so all three technologies are long range technologies. Um, and I think I, I touched already upon MBIT before, um, saying that MBIT sensors uh, use more power than LoRaWAN sensors. That's proven by multiple uh, of our customers and partners and institutions. So that's the disadvantage of MBIT. The advantage, of course, of MBIT is that uh, many network operators, mobile operators, provide MBIT across country. So there's public networks available in, in various countries. However, you cannot build your own private MBIT network. That means you're relying on the fees of a mobile operator. So you pay per sensor uh, a couple of euros per, per month or per year. And if you have a 10 year lifetime of the sensor, that adds up right to the total cost of ownership. So many of our customers appreciate the fact that with uh, LoRaWAN, they don't have those subscription costs for S4 MBIT. Um, and that is the same reason why Sigfox is also having a disadvantage that their technology, their, their um, standards, if you deploy Sigfox stand, uh, sensors, you pay on a subscription basis, um, which is, again, is cost, which you would not have with a LoRaWAN uh, solution. Uh, and with Sigfox, of course, you're, it's, it's a single operator that operates worldwide which is, uh, gives a dependency on how well the network operates, right? Uh, whereas many of our industrial customers, they prefer to keep the network in their own hands, build their own LoRaWAN network and have full control. And also from security perspective, uh, would uh, put them in a better position than using a Sigfox network. Uh, you have to bear in mind, I didn't mention yet, but the LoRaWAN network has a two level security and a 128 bit uh, EES uh, encryption. So it is a highly secure IoT network, and that's one, that's one of the reasons as well why industrial applications and also other uh, office applications run on, uh, on LoRaWAN. Definitely strong arguments, yeah. yeah. So let's see, we have another question from the chat. Yes, smart city projects and applications are becoming more common. Which application area in the most is the most efficient for cities to use LoRaWAN in? Yeah, so many cities, uh, particularly uh, uh, in, in Europe, but also Germany, are now uh, rolling out LoRaWAN networks uh, for providing water metering solutions. Water metering is one. The other one is electricity metering, um, smart uh, heating uh, metering. So users have basically a smart meter at home and uh, the utility provider can measure the consumption. Uh, that's really uh, one of the main applications. And there's other smart city applications, which are like uh, smart parking, waste management, uh, so automatic detection of, uh, of level of waste inside these containers. Um, so it, there's a whole host of smart city applications that uh, become viable. And again, here, this goes back to what I said before. If you have, keep in mind the multi-tenancy of an IoT network, if a city or a utility uh, deploys a LoRaWAN network, they can start with one use case and they can keep adding more use cases and applications where they want it, right? So that's uh, that's the beauty of the LoRaWAN. Mm. Yep, so there's tons of applications involved. Absolutely. And smart buildings, I mean, if you say smart cities, uh, you also talk about basically about smart buildings. Mm -hmm. um, Smart buildings is a really a sweet spot for LoRaWAN. The indoor penetration of LoRaWAN is just amazing. And that's what we hear from our customers. Um, putting up a gateway can give you coverage like two or three floors up and two or three floors down at best, at, at the minimum, right? It could be even more, it depends of course on structures and concrete and materials, but with one LoRaWAN gateway and the indoor gateways are even cheaper than the outdoor gateways. You have basically your, your IAT network in the building and nowadays, with um, this issue of workers having to return back to the office. Uh, many companies are considering to have uh, hot desks where they can monitor the usage of desks 
and also have an application for the workers to let them know that there's desks and rooms available based on real-time data. And they have indoor room sensors from uh, based on LoRaWAN that gives them this, the, this real-time detection, right? So you can book a room and you can see exactly that the room is, is available because nobody's there. And the desks, the same thing. This is one of the key applications that we see is now uh, is, is gaining traction to have a higher efficiency of the use of offices. Especially a strong push during the corona pandemic now, where uh, home office and maybe coming back for one or two days back to the regular office is becoming a more regular and more used system now for companies um, than it was before. So a strong push for, for these solutions as well, yes. Yeah, um, and also contact tracing in this context is think relevant to uh, yeah. to mention. There is a couple of uh, large enterprises that I would have hoped I could have uh, disclosed today, but it's a non-disclosure that are using LoRaWAN based contact tracing solutions. So employees, they wear a badge or an um, an uh, a, just a sensor around their neck or in their pocket, and it detects uh, uh, how close they've been with certain people. So if there's like one case of a of a person that was tested positively, you can actually see which employees were uh, within close proximity and would have to go in quarantine or at least would not be allowed to go back into the office. So that's the solution uh, rolled out in many, many large enterprises around the world just to protect their staff against infections, but also protect their business against lockdowns if their staff would get infected uh, in a massive way. And we've seen many, many examples the last year and a half of companies that had to close down um, that can be just prevented by having your staff wearing these uh, LoRaWAN-based uh, contact tracing uh, trackers. And of course, then companies are thinking about, okay, once we invest in this technology, how long can we use it? Because hopefully this pandemic will be over in, in a matter of months. Uh, although we know now this is going to probably take longer. However, having said that, these contact traces can be used also in logistics applications. So there's one example I cannot uh, sp talk specifically about, but where these contact traces are now being used at forklift drivers and the workers in a distribution center. So in terms of safety for forklifts uh, traveling through the distribution center, they get alerts and uh, can actually uh, avoid accidents between forklifts and, and workers. So yeah, there's so many applications around there. It's just uh, too, too many to, to mention. Yeah, but 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 I think you gave a good impression of what is possible um, to the audience, and yeah, the rest is basically up to what you can imagine, yeah. right? Um, too many fields to mention all one by one. Let's see if we have one more question from the chat. What about MyOT versus LoRaWAN? What is your opinion on this? Yeah, I think MyOT has been a standard developed by Fraunhofer that uh, is also long range uh, wireless communications. Uh, so it's, I think from a standard, it's, it's fairly similar to LoRaWAN in how you use the spectrum. But I mean, the, the, the standard is not widely adopted. It is in Germany, it's uh, reasonably well known, of course, because of Fraunhofer. Outside Germany, most people don't know MyOT. Um, and it's not, there's not many sensors available on MyOT. Um, so um, I, I don't think how this is going to, I don't know how this is going to further emerge or develop um, uh, commercially, uh, but, but it's, uh, it seems to be a proper standard, but it's not, as I said, it's not an international uh, widely adopted standard. Okay, thank you for your opinion on this and of course for your lecture and um, to give us Welcome. all an of what is possible with LoRaWAN and even um, beyond the world, even in uh, with satellites. Yes. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank for you your very lecture. much for your presentation. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Have a great yeah. day. Bye. Bye. Have a you good day. Too. Bye. Bye.